This episode of Joyride is being brought to you by High Bank. High Bank is a proud Columbus-based distillery. Look for High Bank Spirits at your local liquor store and favorite bars around the city. By purchasing High Bank Spirits, you're supporting and drinking local. Drink local, drink High Bank. What's going on, Rob? Nothing much, Pete. How are you? Oh, man. You're listening to Joyride, a (laughs) podcast for people who (laughs) love cars. That's great. That's good. Welcome back, now everybody, to Joyride. Enjoy yeah, the for ride. Tuning in again. Yeah. Been a bit of a hiatus. A little bit of a hiatus. Uh, COVID scare. Yeah. I mean, not not us personally, but enough to keep us in our immediate vicinity. Yeah. So we stay tight and warm. Make sure that we're okay. Yeah. Yeah. Emails coming in from listeners. Yes. Not super nice with what they're saying. <laughs> <laughs> but constructive constructive yeah. things yeah. Are, are good to well, hear. Yeah. Well, yeah. Calling me out really is, is what it is. It's just <laughs> flat out calling me out. But uh, that's okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's an email nonetheless. Sure. So um, user engagement, I it, think, is what they call that in the business. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we want more of it. So keep them coming. Yeah. 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 Even if I am full of shit, let me know. <laughs> A secret. Oh, yeah. Everything I've said is probably <laughs> full of shit. How's the Beamer treating you? Ooh, ooh. <laughs> the saga continues. So where we left off, you you had taken into a shop. They yep. had identified a few things that mm-hmm. needed fixed. Some things you were going to do. Some things you weren't. Yep. And then you had the bungle with the title. Yeah. So yeah, how, has yeah. that worked itself out yet? The title has worked itself out. Okay, so if fantastic. you remember, and I'll briefly recap. I go to the DMV. And they have the place where you get the title and then two doors down you go and you get your registration. They don't do the same same thing in the same place. I go to the first spot to go change the title, realize I have the wrong title. I go into the place next door because I still have a trailer I gotta you know, get a tag for. I still got my truck I have to get a tag for. So I I do those things. Sure, while you're there. Well yeah, while I'm there. Yeah. Right. Three days later the title comes in the mail. I go back to the title bureau. Uh everything's great. I get the title put in my name, and I go, okay, I'm just going to go next door. And uh, they said, nope. I said, what? I said, any tags? They're like, yeah, they're closed until mid-September. What? What? I was just there a week ago. Not even a week ago. Is it just that office? COVID. Yep. No. Yep. Oh, my God. Yep. (laughs) COVID. Somebody in the office had it. Oh, no. Shut the whole thing down. So... As a resident of this particular county, you don't have a lot of choices. There's another... There used to be lots of them, and mm-hmm. they've, they've shut a lot of them down. Closest one was about 40 minutes away. Okay. And I was like, yeah, not doing that. <laughs> so, still not able to legally drive this car. But at least it's in your name now. It, yes. So that's good. I have ownership of it. There you go. And I'm actually paying insurance on it. So like should something happen, car accident or stolen or whatever. You're, yeah, you're you're probably okay. But I don't have a license plate on the back of it. Uh, so, you know, I'm a sitting duck, right? All I got to do is have a cop pull up behind me and be like, "Oh, this is easy." <laughs> 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 Let's see what else we can do, you know? Yeah, like, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's yeah. it's an easy way to get pulled over. It's sure. Like, Sure. But I did take it to the shop. I did not get everything fixed. Uh, the lower lower control arm ball joint. I don't forget I forget what I what it was. Yeah. They seemed okay. I don't know. Whatever. Got a clutch put in it. I actually just nice. got a phone call today. It's ready to be picked up. Eighteen hundred dollars oh, later. <laughs> well, it was an original clutch. You yeah. Know. Yeah. Yeah. So the clutch kit and everything you need for it, three hundred and ten dollars. With new lines and all that kind of stuff? Or no. No, just, no. Just, just the clutch. Just the clutch, Okay. Yeah. Labor, six hours. It's like, holy shit. So half of that $1,800, more than, a little more than half of it was yeah. clutch related. Yeah. I changed the spark plugs because they looked like they were original. Oil change, brake fluid, coolant flush. And I think that's all I did. Okay. I think that's all I did. Yeah. Yeah. So, woo. Yeah, woo. <laughs> we will uh we will pick it up next week. I can't wait to legally take it out and see how that new clutch works for you. Yeah, you and me both. Yeah. <laughs> uh I think sometime between now and next week, we're going to have a little um experimental drive time. Okay. Between uh 
one rear wheel drive car and another. Yeah. And then I think we'll have we'll have some some things to talk about for next week. But uh, fingers crossed. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully you get behind the wheel of both these things. Yeah. And uh, we'll we'll talk about it a little bit. But so far, so good. To be honest with you, you've been happy that it's been in the shop because like every day it's there. They're not asking me to pay for it. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <you know, like, laughs> but uh, time to go get it. This uh, this shop's pretty cool though because the owner actually has I don't know what year it is, but it's a 911 SC. Oh, yeah, and it's kind of old school. And I, <laughs> he says he has nothing but problems with it. So like it's always like there getting worked on. Okay, but um, perpetual shop yeah, car. But like I like driving past their shop because in the parking lot are all of these foreign cars that I like. Yeah. In various years and models getting worked on. So they're like a Mercedes, Audi, VW, Porsche, BMW shop. And do they do any new inventory? Is it all strictly like older stuff? It's whatever you want to take them. I mean, okay. it, the newer the newer the car you have, more, the more likely you're probably getting it serviced under warranty at the dealership. Right. These are all kind of late model, you know, two generation ago type things. Yeah. I, I walked in there <laughs> when I dropped off the car. There was a Mercedes, um, what's the small, uh, like a C300? Is that like the introductory sedan? 2008. Okay. Right? Old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Introductory. $32,000 car new. You could buy one for 3200 right, right now. Yeah. This little old lady, according to the mechanic, wanted them to basically rebuild her engine. Whatever she needed, they had to take out the engine. I mean, the whole engine was out, and they were working on it on a stand. And the bill for it is more than you could go buy another one for. And I looked at him, and I said, you told her, right? Like She knows how much this is going to yeah, cost. Like, yeah. You're not the mechanic that's like fleecing the old. He's like, no, I begged her not to do this. I, I told her this was a bad idea. <laughs> She just wants her car. She sure. likes her car. She's comfortable in her car, and she she wanted us to fix it. And I'm yeah, like, dude, that's nuts. That's crazy. Only for something else to inevitably break, and it's well, a C three hundred. It's not like it's a, a well made. That might have been that lady's dream car. It's mm. gonna be her nightmare car here. <laughs> in a minute, I it's gonna have a brand new engine in it. Nothing's gonna go oh, wrong, lady. God. I feel you. I was like, okay, so you know, I I, told I, I love that he that he didn't want to do it though. Oh yeah, he, he's uh, that's like, great. I because I, I, I felt the same way. I was like. Yeah, right. What Does mechanic not, are you going yeah, to? What, I don't know that I want to take anything yeah. potential there. Yeah, that's my fun my fun mechanic story. But they're they're good they're good dudes. They're old um dealership guys. They worked at, at these dealerships for 10, 15 years, kind of started their own yeah. shop. So they're they're familiar with it and understand them. Well, it's all good. Yeah. And it's it's close, so new Nissan Z, have you seen it? I have seen it. Yes. <laughs> oh, I have. What do you think? I like some of it. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. I, I'm sort of in. Sort of in. Okay. I'm sort of in, but there's a lot of question marks still. So I think the overall silhouette from the side, I think is pretty good. I feel like it's a little chonky mm-hmm. compared to like the 240Z, which I know is what they sort of really drew heavily on. That's what they pulled the taillights from, right? Yeah. The taillights. Okay. Yeah. 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 And and sort of the overall body shape is kind of like it, there's a really cool shot of an old 240Z and the proto like parked nose to nose. That's really sweet. I really like the interior. Did you see the interior of it? I have not. Okay, you should pull up some shots of the interior. The interior looks finished. Like I, I'm pretty sure like that's the way it's going to look. I'm not. I'm not 100 sold that the exterior is going to be. Is that right? Okay. What it is, but everybody's saying that the last time Nissan did a proto with the art, the skyline that it looked almost identical to what they ended up coming out with a year or so later. Nice. I'm really don't like the front end of it. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> hate it. So do you hate all of it or you, you hate the only thing I, I can think I can come to terms with and like are the taillights. The taillights are awesome because it's reminiscent yeah. and a callback to, I think the rear end of it is the best looking part of the exterior of the car. But what is up with those headlights? Yeah. The headlights are weird and that, the grill, the front grill that it's just like a big square. So you know, we've had, we've had some people on before that like one of their like, Dream cars was a Z, like Mm -hmm. Nissan Z. But I got to be honest, I've never been into them. Yeah. And I drove past one actually uh, yesterday in preparation for this. I I turned around and and drove past it again. Do you get the sense that they're just heavy? Yes. They just look. They look heavy. They look heavy. Even though they're small cars. Even though they're small cars. Yeah. And I don't know if it's a design. I don't. 
I can't tell you that they're heavy. The truth is they're probably no more yeah. heavy than anything else in his peer class, right? Yeah. Is it a design thing? Is it a is it a, because they're low and squatty and why? I mean, it looks like a freaking brick. It's it looks a weird like it ways like a brick. Yeah, right? it's a weird body style because it sort of treads the line between hatchback and like a fastback kind yeah, of yeah. kind of design. Right. Okay. They're real chunky and they sit low and they're wide. I think part of the th- thing is the original 350Z came out. I mean, they've been sitting on that same design for like 12 or 13 years. Yeah. I mean, even though they facelift it with the 370, mm-hmm. it's still the same looking car. Yeah. It's still the same silhouette. A little bit has changed here and there. Um, so I, I think part of it is that they haven't designed a sports car in 17 years. There's something about it, and it's driving me nuts because I can't articulate it. It looks like it weighs too much. Yeah. And it sounds like it can't move under that power. Like the rumor is, is that it's going to be called the 400Z instead of like 350Z, 370Z. So 400Z, and part of that people four liter V8. No. <laughs> well, it's going to be a three liter uh, turbo char, twin turbo charged six. Jeez. So they're thinking it's going to be around 400 horsepower. Gotcha. Hence the that same engine that they're assuming is going to come out of it is the same three liter that's in the Infinity Q60 Red Sport 400. Mm. which has 400 horsepower. Yeah. So they're thinking they're going to use that same engine or modify it slightly. Yeah. I think with 400 horsepower, it'll be good. Yeah. The things that make me excited about it. Number one, it's, it's a Japanese car coming back. Um, that's a sports car that is not, they didn't partner with anybody. Yeah. So that's kind of exciting. We're not going to get the BMW Toyota thing where it's, is it a BMW? Is it a Toyota? Is it some weird mix and how, you know, whose dream came true and what, you know, Mm -hmm. like we're not going to get any of that. It is a Nissan thing from the ground up. Which also could be its problem. It could be a disaster too. It might not ever hit the market because Nissan is doing really bad now financially. They've had some really tough years partially because they, they've been sitting on their own designs. Now, I like the 350 and the 370Z. I think they're cool cars. Would I ever buy one? I don't yeah. know, but I was intending on on shopping them. Yeah, I was going to take one for a spin just to see because they're they're everywhere. They're yeah. relatively affordable. Mm-hmm. They're even low miles, they're cheap. I don't know if it's a V6 or an inline 6, whatever. I think it's I think it's a V6. I think so too. I'm but not, I don't know. I'm not sure, but I know you can t- they do really well in the tuning scene so you could you know you can tune them up and whatever mm-hmm. um, and they last I was 100% going to test drive them the other thing that makes me excited is the interior looks great manual transmission yeah that's it well, it's it's a japanese car that's going to that's going to come with twin turbocharged manual transmission yeah and and all the other guys you know you're going to have toyota scrambling scrambling to get the supra not only in a manual, but like the, the they didn't mention anything about price. But if this thing can come in, like a brand new Supra is all is, is like 50, 60 grand to get a new Supra. If this thing can come into the market yeah. in like low 30s, yeah. oh, it's game over. Like everybody will buy them. Everybody will. Even though if, if the design looks a little chonky. Well, speaking of cars coming in a manual, um, I sent you a picture of this and it'll probably be up on Joyride here. Uh, on the Instagram account, it's not a super good picture, right? Like this is probably part of our problem, right? <laughs> we need better, better well, collateral. That's that's what we really part. Need. Part of it is that there's no car meets to to take better pictures. All of our pictures is like, oh, there goes something. Quick, quick pull over. Like, <laughs> I was behind a new Aston Martin mm, Vantage, yeah, coupe, oh. uh, out of Florida with a Florida plate. Love it. I was so impressed, and didn't know until I was on its bumper what it was. I couldn't I couldn't put it. So they've they've restyled, but they've kept the design aesthetic and I mean I think it's fantastic. I love them. Yeah. But it's it's offered in a manual. And really and it's cheaper than its automatic counterpart. Love that. Yeah, love by, it. and it should be. By like four grand. So if you're looking to save a little bit of money, you can get <laughs> one with a manual for hundred and forty six thousand mm-hmm. dollars. But I'm telling you, beautiful. Oh yeah, beautiful. I, and I'm not an Aston Martin fan, but again, a, a car that sat on the same design for a long time. They did. They really did. Yeah. Long time. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful facelift. I love the way the new Astons look, and they're purposely putting a manual gearbox. In. Yeah. Dig that. Now, would I? Buy one? 
Apples to Apples against a Porsche, against a Lexus LC 500, something like that. Like, yeah. I don't know. I don't you know. know. Yeah. But those are those are problems those, you and I will we, never we have. Don't, we don't have those kinds of problems, yeah, but it, right. it's an impressive car. I remember seeing one, and I think pictures of it are up on the Instagram page in lime green that I mm-hmm, saw. Mm-hmm fantastic looking car yeah. there there are the great lines on it great lines everywhere it's the right size yes. it's the right sound yep you can get them in multiple engine types mm-hmm. now and they're impressive I oh, mean, they put yeah. up numbers oh yeah. yeah 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 the price tag just is you know oh yeah I mean, boxes me out right. completely sure but, but it's you know it's it's a comfortable mm-hmm. beautiful fat i mean it's everything you want yeah. out of a car yep. you know what i mean it might not go around the track the fastest mm-hmm. but who cares? You know, no, it, no, it's cares? An, that car is an experience, man. Yeah. Yeah. Love, love, love. Well, Save, what else? saving the manuals. Yeah, I love it. I know. I mean, I absolutely love it. There's a market for it for sure. If you own a Hyundai or a Kia and you haven't seen the massive recall that they did, no, you need to pay attention. Okay. Um, 600,000 vehicles in the U S and Canada <laughs> have been recalled. 440,000 Kia Optima midsize sedans from 2013 to 2015, uh, Sorento SUVs from 2014 and 2015, and Santa Fe SUVs from 2013-2015. They um, all have been recalled because there are leaks that can cause the car to catch on fire. <laughs> so seriously, just, if you yeah, if just, you own one or know somebody who owns one, just reach out, make sure they've seen. Because a lot of times you get those things in the mail and you just pitch them. You don't yep. even look at. I've gotten yep. recalls for my vehicles mm-hmm. and didn't know it at the time because I just thought it was some BS that they're. We'd like to buy your car. Yeah, for, right. You know yeah. that that whole thing. Yep. Um, no, this is real serious. There there are several articles that say that even recommend that if you're out and about and you realize this that you should park your car and get it towed to a dealership no kidding so uh make sure you reach out to a dealership near you if you happen to own a yeah. hyundai or kia look at that saving lives robert i you know <laughs> this is the simple things Pete. yeah it's the simple things <laughs> I gotcha. okay yeah. yeah well i mean that kind of i mean how do you follow like save your life type of news article but uh i was reading up on uh evs and okay uh, bloomberg had a nice article that was out about how so this is what's funny. Like I think, like sometimes you just need to write articles to fill space. This yeah. felt like one of those. I okay. mean, if you're not enough, was happening on a, on a Tuesday. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I mean, in the automotive world, I mean, how much how much can you really write about right now? Right. I mean, maybe that's what where they were coming from. But you know, from a financial perspective, there are analysts, you know, plenty that follow the automotive industry for various investments, right, through equities and bonds and everything else, and so. This article was specifically talking about the performance of EVs to their counterparts. Oh, um, like sales-wise? Sales-wise, okay. yeah. Unit okay. sales, right. And um, what was interesting about it was the whole auto market has gone to shit, right, right. From, from a unit's perspective. And the whole concept of this article was while everything is in the toilet, EVs are like floating at the top, <laughs> like, <laughs> right? Like, like these are the ones that eat the fiber, right? Like, right. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're they've declined at a at a lesser rate. Traditional cars may have been down thirty percent, right? Yeah. Um, that's in a good a good estimate. Yeah. A lot of them are forty and fifty percent down. EVs yeah. were down twelve. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think like, it's a do you think it's a, like a, a budget thing where people are are seeing an opportunity to save cost on, you know, operating costs? You know, it never it never said why. The yeah. only thing that you could discern was was a regional appetite, right? Okay. Um they declined uh more in uh North America, specifically the United States, uh than anywhere else in in the world. Europe had one of the best declining rates is as much as that is an oxymoron. Like <laughs> I think Europe was only down maybe 8%. Okay. Um, comparatively year over year. Um, so maybe it's a regional thing. Maybe yeah. it's, it's the regulation involved. There's a lot you could read into the article never went into it, but there could be extenuating circumstances or factors that, that are pushing people to EVs anyway. 
And, you know, they might just be thinking like, well, you know, my car's done. Regulations are such where, you know, I knew my next car was an EV. I've just with COVID, nobody's driving the kind of drives there anymore. If your car is just sitting in the garage. That's a really good point. Yeah. You know, and all you're doing is running down the store once a week to get groceries or Mm -hmm. you're running out to grab food, you know, from your favorite local spot. You don't need the. You don't need gas. Mm -hmm. You know, you can easily charge it up and and be there and back and charge it up again and it'll be full before you need to use it gas next week yeah gas aside it's it's, it's the range right you don't yeah. need the same range. you don't need the same range because you're not yeah. dro- going to work and driving here and driving there and yeah. going all over the place that's interesting i didn't think about it like that but i'm sure that has it's some sort of some, impact and, and i know that just in general the popularity and just you know market acceptance is yeah. growing for them as a yeah. as more of a it's not a niche thing it's, anymore you know, you know? It, it feels like we've prepared this podcast but <laughs> the segue there for market acceptance i mean did you see ford f-150s available this fall no fully electric oh my gosh yeah. no way yeah yeah wow yeah nuts and doesn't look half bad the torque out of mm-hmm. electric, I mean, it makes sense. It totally makes sense. They have trucks. this new workstation. So the innovation in cars, right, is pretty stagnant because, you know, we've we've kind of done what we can do. But as we change and how we how we engage with cars changes, um, uh, and for that matter, everything we engage with changes, there's an electronic button in the center console okay. where the shifter is. So okay. on Fords, they put it in the center console and you put it into drive, right? There's an electronic button that you press. The shifter folds down okay. f- flat. All right. Then you take the the compartment, like where you rest your arm and you know how you can put stuff in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That folds the opposite way and it creates a flat surface and they call it their new work surface. So you can put a laptop on it. Oh my God. I swear to you. And I'm thinking, this is, I mean, we just talked about this. That's genius. Yeah. You were just talking Mm -hmm. about that, how there's no room to work in your car. Yeah. And they figured it out. Yeah. It's wild to see the video. Like actually this thing folds down and then you just fold over like a tray table in an yeah. airplane like just that's crazy but electric trucks man are coming hard i mean, I mean good for ford you know they're, 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 i wonder what the process was to get that i mean it was probably on a timeline of like hey yeah. we want an ev truck by x yeah. date yeah. and they pushed that up i'm sure well between tesla coming out with their garbage you know whatever <laughs> that is God. um when but, were they supposed to be shipping those <laughs> wasn't it supposed to be this year nobody's talking about it anymore nobody's talking about the cyber truck anymore no. i wonder why, i forgot what why, it was called <laughs> wonder why that is yeah right tesla cyber truck yeah. hey where is it elon yeah nobody's <laughs> idiot he's busy building tunnels and spaceships <laughs> but yeah i think i think that accelerated it i think i think from a business perspective uh anybody that follows um you know the finances of public companies for investment purposes you'll see that in the last six months, you know, when you look back on this period of time, the amount of write-offs and charge downs that they've taken because they can blame it on COVID. So, you know, they, um, there, there, there's probably some of that. Um, GM is coming hard with, with their fuel cell. In fact, they just were in the news this week about partnering with a a startup, almost like a Silicon Valley based Okay. Startup. They make electric trucks. They're publicly traded, have some preliminary funding. They're making some progress. GM Inc.'s a two billion dollar deal that Ooh. gives them like a forty percent stake in it. So okay. I mean just like massive partnership. Huge Brings injection total of money. Total legitimacy. Yeah. Um, not just from an engineering perspective, um, less so from an engineering perspective, but more so from a production perspective. Right. And uh three days later, the SEC files uh <laughs> Files an investigation for fraud oh, and no. misdirection of investors. And so now, like, this deal's hanging in the balance. Uh, GM's CEO is on record as, like, saying that she's standing by the investment and they're, you know, cooperating with all the blah, blah, blah. But it's like, is this a deal made made in heaven or a deal made with the devil? Like, I, I mean, this could go really, really wrong. And, you know, GM can't, I mean, it's a big company, but you can't make a $2 billion bet like that and and have it go sideways like it's a it'll impact them for sure yeah so uh, gm again uh in the news with that but also with their partnership with honda that they just inked a deal oh uh, ceo mary yeah mary, mary barra yeah right? is that how you pronounce it i think barra? so barra 
I don't know. Sorry, sorry, Mary. I just call her Mary. Mary. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You guys are old friends. <laughs> yeah, right? right, right. You know her as well as I do. We just say Mary. <laughs> so, yeah. So, they, so that deal didn't go as well. Or maybe maybe it'll be fine. I don't know. We'll see what the SEC digs up on those. Mm. I don't know. Uh, but they, GM also inked a new deal with Honda. So, they've been partnering for a few years trying to develop. Same thing. Fuel cell. Mm-hmm. Like the next... It's a, it's a race right now of who can develop better batteries, mm-hmm. the, f- the fastest, better range, smaller, less weight, all yeah. that stuff. Everybody's trying to you know figure it out. About a month ago, they they said that they're going to spend twenty billion between Ooh. now and twenty twenty five, about three billion a year on EV development, um, and they're partnering with Honda. So they're they're both going to partner up and make two new vehicles. Um, I don't. It's kind of unclear of whether it's going to be. Um, two for each or whether they're going to develop two and one is going to take one and one is going to take the other. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, Probably the latter. Yeah. I, I don't know. It says that the vehicles are going to be manufactured in North America, but they're not saying what, what plants they're going to mm. be made in. So um, who knows? Um, it says the, so this, this article comes from our boys up at the Detroit free press. It's good. I, th- I think what it's kind of car though, just like true EV. EV, EV. Okay. So we're not getting anything sporty or fun. Or- no, but you know, it got me thinking that Honda makes a really nice car in the um, type R Pacific type R mm-hmm. it's, if you can get by the styling, mm-hmm. they, they didn't do a very good job styling the car. I don't think some people love it. It's a, it's a very polarized. You love it or you hate it. There's sure, no middle sure. ground on the, on the civic type R. Yeah. I can guess where you fall in that equation. Barf. Barf. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> on a scale of one to barf. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so they make that car, but it's a fantastic drive. Like the, the driving experience of that car is supposed to be phenomenal. Manual transmission goes around a track like hell, comfortable, mm-hmm. very fast. Um, and then you've got GM on the other side, you know, doing, doing their thing with, Corvette and, yeah. and Camaro and right. all that stuff. We know that Honda, there's been rumors for years that they're developing the new S2000. Not going to be called the S2000, but yeah. can you imagine if those two, yeah, they're working on their EV thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You guys over here. But like, let's let's get all the b- big brain people over here in the room. <laughs> let's get some Corvette tech in the S2000. Let's, I mean, and I don't... I think that would be an interesting mashup, but the idea as long as they let GM style it, like let's let <laughs> let's let GM. I mean, not that they're like that'll the world be the on only fire. time anybody on record says <laughs> let GM style it. You've heard it here first. I mean, the Camaro. Uh, let's leave, <laughs> let's let them work on the EVs. They can work on the EVs. Let's bring the Corvette guys over here. Yeah, yeah come, come on in. Come in here. Sit Do you down. think the drive experience, like the the ethos of the car, the DNA of an S two thousand? I mean, yes, very cool to put. Corvette tech, right? And in in a car and in, in a Honda, but that S two thousand doesn't drive like anything else GM made. Like, I mean, it's very Japanese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think there's a you... huge uh, there's a huge missing market right now in small two seater mm-hmm. sports cars. Yep. At a nice price where Honda kills it in other vehicle categories. Mm-hmm. And I think that between GM and Honda, they could come up with something in that two seater convertible category that could blow the reigning champion Miata out of the water, you know? Yeah. And yeah. I think there would be a market. I mean, I, I'm biased because I love that kind of car. I'm a, I'm a two seat convertible. GM you know. can dust off the uh, blueprints for the Solstice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Put a Honda engine in it. Put a Honda, yeah, 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 yeah. And some elect, uh, magnetic some, ride suspension maybe from some the different, Corvette. Maybe some different styling. Maybe a little bit. I, uh, I wasn't crazy about how sure, <laughs> the Solstice styling. look. Yeah, yeah. You're just the guy yeah. that just said, let GM style it. <laughs> 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 it's what, so you pull the ugly stepchild yeah. out of the, uh, yeah. you know, out of from the next room and, Man. You know. but no magnetic rot. Yeah, yeah. All that stuff. I mean, I think it would be, it could be great. Yeah, it could be. Do you, so I was thinking about this because we've been talking about Miatas quite a bit and Z threes and yeah. that might be another episode. Um, but I had this like great idea for a business, right? Okay. It's not that great. <laughs> and nor am I anywhere near capable of pulling this off. But I was thinking about how expensive cars have gotten. And cars are expensive for a whole host of reasons, right? Mm-hmm. Safety, regulation, tech, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Makes sense. 
But to start a, 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 a from scratch car company like they did, you know, when Ford did it, right? And the Chrysler brother, right? Like that is a $10,000 basic car. It steers, <laughs> it stops, and it goes. Yeah. Right? Like, I wonder, I wonder, like, if you could, if you could niche out, like, I mean, it, you, it's not mass market. It's not, but if I could get a car that I knew was just purely mechanical yeah. and it's engineering, right? I probably would do it, right? <laughs> you juice it up a little bit with some horsepower, sure. make it small yeah. and light. Yeah. Yeah. It's not going to win any awards. It's not going to beat any track times, but it'll just be like a grown up go kart. Yeah. That's that's really what my vision is. <laughs> a grown up go kart. You want a grown up go kart yeah. without I, any of the frills, without any yeah. of the safety stuff. Without, don't don't give me. You I know, don't know that you could. I don't know that you could manufacture it without the safety stuff. That's the thing. Like yeah. you might have to market it as a go kart because I think you can technically build a car and get oh, a title for it. Sure, but I'm not capable. I mean, I'm not. Yeah. Did you see the partnership with? Um, <laughs> This was pretty cool. This may have been where I got my business idea from. <laughs> it was uh, Lamborghini. Okay. And um, Segway. No. Yeah. <laughs> Made an electronic like uh, EV go-kart. Oh, that would be amazing. And it's painted in, in Lamborghini yellow. Of course. Um, or was it Ferrari? Was it Ferrari Lamborghini? I don't know. Either way, yeah, I'm in. And they took <laughs> tell me more. They took two Segway motors and like bolted them together, <laughs> and it is the most wildly fun looking thing I've ever seen for an adult. Right? Yeah, this isn't for a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was only fifteen hundred bucks. No way. Yeah, but in true fashion and style we get boned hard because it doesn't come to the united states of course not so it's only in europe and it's only available for a limited time and sold yeah. out it's, yeah. it's done bummer yeah but like a true track setup like i mean it, that would be that would be great i mean how much fun could you have for, for 1500 what else could you do uh i mean you could rent a porsche to take it around nine laps yeah. for 1500 bucks you could, you could buy a thousand dollar beater and Put some new tires on it and have it fall apart on you. Yeah. Or you could charge your go-kart, take it to the go-kart track. I don't know where those are. I mean, I'm sure. Maybe. Okay, this podcast takes off. Okay. I'm telling you right now. Mark okay. my words. All right. Podcast takes off. I'm buying a 75,000 square foot warehouse. I am <laughs> I am concreting. I like this is going. Okay. I'm concreting the entire floor. Brand yep. new concrete. Mm -hmm. And I am making... My own personal and for friends, go kart track. I like it. Yeah, I'm okay. in. Let's get some Lamborghini Segway mm -hmm. shipped over. Yep, from our European listeners. Maybe that's it. Maybe we can get hey, somebody send us one. Love to test it out. <laughs> Give a review. <laughs> I think we've lost anybody who's still listening at this point. No. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, okay, boys, you've been going on for okay. a while. All right. Yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah, all right. Yeah. All right. All right. Gotcha. Dulge your stupid fantasies. I want the listeners to, to to make it happen, man. Get me get me more downloads so that we can all come over to my new warehouse. Yeah. We'll have listener parties. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm making promises for you that you I'm in. I'm <laughs> beats in you. I'm it. looking at real estate right now. I just like I don't know. <laughs> Do we want to address the uh the nope. email yeah. that, that came one of the emails that came in? So we got an email from a listener after we've been telling you guys, reach out to us, talk to us, interact, engage, show us that these aren't robots downloading our podcasts. Right? Russian, yeah, Russian spies. <laughs> yeah. So we, we did, we got one and uh, I won't name, I won't name the listener, but you know, and I'll, I'll paraphrase here until the quote, but it's like, Hey, really like the podcast. I, I, I want to interject so much. I wish it was a live show. I'm like, oh, that's a neat idea. Maybe at some point we'll do we'll do a live. I think out of everybody that's reached out to us, the consistent theme is like I'm screaming at myself uh -huh. because I have an opinion that... <laughs> that it's unheard. Yeah, it's unheard and yeah, un yeah, yeah. unrecognized in, in any way, whether it's, yeah. you agree with it or not. I'm like, great, yeah. And then they give us this idea about maybe doing an episode or a segment on um, 60s, 70s Japanese cars. Oh, okay. And Love uh, that. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, okay, cool. He's like, listen, love the BMW. Can't believe you bought your old car. And I'm going through the email here. and goes, I just got to throw this out there. Episode 3, minute 14. <laughs> and I quote, oh, I'm not a big fan 
of rebuying the same car. <laughs> Pete got getting called yeah. out. Mic drop. Didn't even sign his name at the bottom. <laughs> Just that was the end of it. So love it. Yeah, yeah. you did say that. I must have. No, I don't I, remember. I remember you saying that. Yeah, you're not a fan because you have the experience. <laughs> And then we're moving on to the next experience. That's exactly how. <laughs> yeah. Boy, oh boy. Uh, egg I couldn't, on your face. Oh, yeah. Bathing in egg. I yeah. mean, I, I couldn't have gone any more in the other direction. Any more in the other direction, I would have started turning around and coming back. Like, yeah. It was bad. Nice. Yeah. I love that email. We got some deep listeners. I mean, episode three. What are we on? Like six, this seven, ten? Seven, 17. 17. Yeah. They went way back. Deep cuts. We. <laughs> into the joyride yeah. library yeah right they have to yeah. we're not even hosting those episodes anymore <laughs> well done yeah i love it yeah Keep, hey call us on it i yeah no i welcome it that's cool my opinion changes every day so sure you can't you can't you can't pin me down you can't just remember that rob was on record as saying let gm style it <laughs> okay all right bring it uh-huh bring me all the hate yeah. and i will <laughs> if you have any comments or uh, ideas about this episode or any of our previous episodes, if feel free to... said anything you yeah. disagreed with? Feel free to re- reach out to email us at, what is it? Contact joyridepod at gmail.com. At gmail.com. Yeah. We'll post a picture of that uh, vantage on uh, joyridepod on, at yeah. joyridepod on, on Instagram. It, on Instagram, yeah. Where else? Our uh, website. What's that called? Joyridepod.com. That's right. You can get your episodes there or anywhere you get your, your Anywhere podcasts. you get your podcasts. You can also get merch, and our bank account is not really <laughs> doing much. In fact, <laughs> the only transaction on it was a fee for having not having a minimum balance in there. So if you guys, shameless plug, would buy a shirt. Or a coffee mug or, you know, yeah. some stickers. Yeah, I don't care. I, I actually... Hundred percent recommend the zip up hoodie. Okay, it's very comfortable. Very it has moved its way to like my top favorite hoodie. And it doesn't have anything to do with the fact that my logo's on the back of it. I, it's just really, really. It's comfy. just a good one. It's a really nice hoodie. Please, so, yeah, recommend that. Okay, buy one for your dad. Yeah, hey, not your dad, but like you, the listener, your your dad. Buy, yeah, buy your oh, dad one. Okay, he yeah. won't know what it is, but that no. doesn't matter. No, he'll wear it. It just has a logo on the back. It doesn't say anything. <laughs> He won't know. Special thanks to our uh, sponsor, uh, High Bank Distillery. Highbankco.com. I think that's it, Rob. Until next time. Enjoy the ride. To reach out and email us at joyride. Contact no, joyridepod at gmail.com. We're going to do another take of this. So <laughs> it works in post for <laughs> highbankdistilleryco.com. Dot co. <laughs> Shit. Highbankco.com. Highbankco.com. That's another post. Post for that. You had it. You Don't. had it. You let it go. Yeah. Why do you let it go? No, Why do you get rid of it? You got, I'm a big fan of never rebuying the same car. And I don't know because I haven't done it yet. I still might, but.